In this video, we introduce the concept of a super mesh. Here we have a circuit that involves three meshes. The left hand mesh, which has a mesh current associated with it of I1. A mesh here with a mesh current defined of I2 and a mesh current here defined of I3. The problem arises when we have a branch that contains an independent current source. By definition, an independent current source produces, in this case, I0 amps of current no matter what the voltage is across it. In other words, there is no relationship between the current source current and its voltage. Let's demonstrate the problem by attempting to write the, super, or the uh, mesh equation around this loop right here, starting in the lower left-hand corner. We've got the voltage drop across R2, which would be R2 times the current through R2 going in the this direction is I2 minus I1. Coming down the right-hand side, we have the voltage drop across R3 is R3 times I2. And now we get to this independent source. We're attempting to write the voltage drops around this mesh. But we have no expression for the voltage drop across I0 in terms of I2 and I3. How do we resolve this? Well, to resolve it, we take advantage of the fact that the sum of the voltage drops around any closed loop must equal 0. So instead of going around each of these meshes separately, we're going to make a trip around the outside of both of these loops combined. Let's show what we mean here by now analyzing this circuit. Let's start by writing the, the uh, loop equation around this left-hand mesh. We'll have negative V0 plus R1 I1 plus, now coming down this branch here, the voltage drop across R2 will be R2 times I1 minus I2 plus the voltage drop across R5, which will be R5 times I1 minus I3. The sum of those voltage drops must equal zero. Nothing new there. Now, let's write the KVL equation going around our combined super mesh. Starting down here in the lower left-hand corner and going in a clockwise direction, we'll have voltage drop across R5 will be R5 times, let's be careful here, we're going up across R5. The current going up is I3 minus I1. So R5 times I3 minus I1 plus the voltage drop across R2 going in this direction will be I2 minus I1 plus the voltage drop across R3 is just going to be R3 times I2 and finally we've got the voltage drop across R6 which will be R6 times I3 and the sum of those voltage drops will equal zero. There we've got the two equations. Again, we're going to get our third equation by taking advantage of the fact that the current in this branch is I0 and that that current I0 in terms of the two mesh currents is equal to the mesh current flowing in this direction minus the current mesh current flowing in that direction. Or I0 will equal I2 minus I3. Thus we have the three equations that we need to cover the three variables that we defined. Again, our first equation came from writing, uh, going around this mesh as we have always done. The second equation came from going around the super mesh, effectively avoiding the need to go across the volt or to know the voltage across that current source. And then the third equation came from the fact that the branch current in this source is, in fact, I0. And in terms of the mesh currents, the current in that branch is I2 minus I3. 
three equations, three unknowns, you're ready to solve it. Using whatever method of, um, for solving systems of equations you choose to use. In the next video, we'll do a numerical example of a supermesh.